kids, good morning. Uh, welcome to another week of Children's Church. Uh, last week, Mr. Greg did a great job in teaching us about Jesus and leading us through our worship service. And this morning, I'm glad to introduce you to your new teacher, Miss Heather. Well, good morning, boys and girls. I am so glad to be with you again this morning. It's been a while, so it's good to see you. And I'm glad that you're here joining us. And we're going to jump right in with our call to worship. And our call to worship this month comes from the book of Psalms. Now, we've done a lot of verses from this book, so you should know. Is it in the Old Testament or is it in the New Testament? That's right. It's in the Old Testament. So let's say it together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And I really love some of the wording in this where it talks about making a joyful noise to the Lord. I know you guys know how to make a joyful noise to the Lord. I've been in children's church with you and in Sunday school classes with you and I've heard you make a joyful noise. So I know you can do it. And when it says to come into his presence with singing, we get the opportunity every Sunday in children's church to sing songs. And this morning we're gonna to get to sing four songs. And so you'll have that opportunity to come into his presence with singing. So let's say this together one more time. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And this is from Psalm 100 verses one through three. All right, let's bow our head, close our eyes, put our hands together and let's pray. Jesus, thank you that we get to come into your presence this morning. What a privilege it is to come before you and to make a joyful noise as we pray to you and as we sing to you. Thank you that we get to hear your word being taught today. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, and now it's time for us to sing a song of praise. Shall I take from your hand your blessing? Yet not welcome any pain Shall I thank you for days of sunshine Yet rumble in days of rain Shall I love you in times of plenty Then leave you in days of drought Shall I trust when I reap a harvest? But when winter winds blow, then doubt. Oh, let your will be done in me. In your love I will abide. Oh, I long for nothing else as long. As you are glorified Are you good only when I prosper And true only when I'm filled Are you king only I'm carefree and God only when I'm well you are good when I'm poor and needy you are true when I'm parched and dry you still reign in the deepest valley you're still God in the dark this night, oh, let your will be done in me, in your love I will abide, oh, I long for nothing else as long as you are glorified. So 
Quiet my restless heart Quiet my restless heart Quiet my restless heart In you Oh, let your will be done in me in your love I will abide oh I long for nothing else as long as you are glorified oh I long for nothing else as long as you are glorified. Okay, so now it's time for us to go over our memory verse. We started this last week, and this one comes also from the book of Psalms. It's from Psalm 40, verses 1 and 2. So let's say it together. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. And I love the wording in here where it talks about lifting us out of a slimy pit or out of the mud and the mire. I don't know how many of you guys actually have had the opportunity to play in the mud, but if you step in like really ooey gooey mud, then sometimes your feet can get stuck and there's nowhere else for you to go. There's nothing to do. You might try to pull your foot out and lose a shoe, but you can really get stuck. And sometimes we don't get stuck physically in mud, but we find that we get ourselves stuck by wrong things that we do. Maybe have you ever told a lie to your parents and you find yourself stuck and you don't know how to get out of that? And what do we do? God just says, if we just turn to him and cry and tell him that we need help, that he's going to lift us up out of that. It's his work. It's him doing that. And he puts our feet, feet on a solid place, on a solid rock. And so when we find ourselves stuck, we can cry out to the Lord. We can confess wrong that we've done. And the Lord's going to reach down and he's going to save us. So let's read that one more time together. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. And that's from Psalm 40, verses 1 and 2. And now we're going to sing our Bible verse song together. Psalms 40, 1 and 2. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock, gave me a firm place to stand. He set my feet on a rock, gave me a firm place to stand. Set my feet on a rock, yeah, and here I am. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me.
All right, good job, guys. That was great singing. And now we're going to take time to pray again. So let's bow our head and close our eyes. Father, we come to you this morning and we are grateful to be here. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that we get to hear your word being taught and that we live in a country where we have the freedom to do that. We thank you, God, that you look out for us every day. And even as there's lots of sickness going around and things can be so different at school um, this past year, that you are looking out for us and you're protecting us and protecting our families and those that we love. Thank you, Father, that in your words you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, now we are coming to our time where we go over our confession of faith. And this is our catechism question, which we take from the New City Catechism, and we are on question eight. And question eight says, what is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? So how many commandments are there? That's right, there are 10 commandments. So we're gonna go over each of these and we're gonna just kind of read through them really quick. And I hope that this month you do have an opportunity to start learning them. And over the next couple of months, we're gonna dig a little bit more into what each of these questions mean and what God's asking us to do through these questions. But for now, we're gonna just read through them. So what is the law of God stated in the 10 commandments? Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Number two, you shall not make for yourself an idol. Number three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Number four, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Number five, honor your father and mother. Number six, you shall not murder. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. steal. Number nine, you shall not give false testimony. And number 10, you shall not covet. And now we're gonna sing our catechism song that's gonna help us as we try to memorize this. What is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? Now we've come to the time in Children's Church where we get to hear our story from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And our story today is called, Let's Go. So let's go and watch it. Zonda Kids presents the Jesus Storybook Bible. Every story whispers his name. Written by Sally Lloyd-Jones and read by David Suchet.
Let's go. After Jesus was baptized, he went straight out into the desert. Now, that might seem like an odd place to go because, as you know, deserts are very hot and there isn't any food or water or places to stay. But Jesus needed to get away by himself and be somewhere quiet and lonely. He needed to be with his heavenly Father to get ready for his new life. In the desert, Jesus thought about the secret rescue plan he had made with God. Before the foundation of the world, they both knew what would have to happen. To rescue God's children, Jesus would have to die. There was no other way. It was the reason he had come. Now, that old enemy, the one who had spoken through the snake to Adam and Eve back in the garden, hmm? remember him? He didn't want Jesus to rescue God's people. So he lied to Jesus. Are you really God's own son? He whispered. Poor you. God must not love you. You don't need to die. Do it my way. Yes, and no, Jesus said to the liar. I will do what God says. And from that moment on, nothing would ever be the same. Jesus wasn't like Adam. Oh, Jesus was a new kind of man. He would not believe the terrible lie that the enemy spoke. Jesus knew God loved him, and he would trust God no matter what. It was just as God had promised to Adam and Eve all those years before. Jesus had come to do battle against the snake's work. He would get rid of the sin and the darkness and the tears, and he would suffer, but he would win. Jesus left the desert and set about the great rescue. He was going to get God's people back. But first, he needed to find some helpers and friends. He had a lot to do. He would need some people to help him. Who would make good helpers, do you think? Clever ones? Rich ones? Strong, important ones? Some people might think so, but I'm sure by now you don't need me to tell you they'd be wrong because the people God uses don't have to know a lot of things or have a lot of things. They just have to need him a lot. One day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw some brothers and friends mending their nets. They were poor fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Let's go! Peter, Andrew, James and John looked up at this man on the shore. And they couldn't explain it. Their boats needed to be put away, their nets needed mending, fish were still wriggling on the shore. But something about this stranger made them just drop their nets and their fish, leave their boats and everything, and follow him. This God-man was like no one they had ever met. When they looked at Jesus, their hearts filled up with a wonderful, forever sort of happiness, and inside it was as if they were running free in an open field. Jesus asked twelve men to be his helpers, Peter, Andrew, James and John, Matthew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, another James, Simon, Thaddeus, and Judas. Meeting Jesus would change all of them forever. All right, so that was a really great story, wasn't it? It tells us several things about who Jesus is and how he was starting his ministry. So first of all, one of the things, what did we see at the beginning? We see that God, Jesus is God's perfect son. And that when Jesus, before he started his ministry, went out into the desert, he was tempted by Satan. And Satan was wanting him to disobey what God said. And what did Jesus say? Say it really loud with me. Let me hear you. He said, no, I'm going to do what God says to do. Jesus, because he was God's perfect son, was able to follow his father and the plans that they had set out, that the, the video was telling us was set out before the creation of the world. 
they had a plan for who Jesus was going to, when Jesus was going to come and how he was going to live his life perfectly as God's son on earth. And so when Jesus was going to start his ministry, he called some men to come and follow him. And he gathered these men around him to help him in his ministry and to be his friends. And that's something that we can learn, that it's important to have friends who know Jesus and who love him, right? So whether it's our family, whether it's friends that we have at school, or whether it's friends that we have here at church, we want to surround ourselves with people who love Jesus so they can encourage us to know him and to love him more. And what happened when Jesus called those 12 disciples to follow him? What did they do? Do you remember what the story said? That's right. They dropped everything they were doing and they immediately went and followed Jesus. And when Jesus calls us to follow him, our hearts, because of how much Jesus loves him and how worthy he is and because he is God's perfect son, then we wanna drop everything that we're doing and say, yes, Jesus, I'm ready to follow you. Well, it has been great to be with you this morning. And now we're gonna sing our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. Well, kids, I hope y'all had a great time with us here this morning. Um, we thank y'all for being with us. We thank Miss Heather for doing such a good job teaching us. Now please stand with me for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.